morning, Christine Regan Lake here. Hope all is well. Um, so today I would like to talk to you about soul ties. So soul ties are a very um, interesting aspect to sexual relationships and I think they're one that really quite honestly don't get enough attention. Um, you know, we are raised in a world where it, the, um, you know, society likes to pretend that sex is, um, you know, kind of just this no big deal, you know, this 3D thing that you can engage with people at will, um, you know, and it's, uh, that it's just not a big deal. And the reality is when you look at the physical body and the spiritual body, that's just not true. <laughs> so what is a soul tie exactly? So, um, a great way to describe a soul tie is imagine taking like two pieces of wood and gluing them together. And so you glue them together and you let them set overnight or, you know, for a few days, and then you come back you take those two pieces of wood and you rip them apart. When you rip them apart, what you'll find is that there's actually pieces of wood on both sides from, you know, this piece of wood has pieces of this piece of wood stuck to it and this piece of wood has some of this piece of wood stuck to it. And it's just inevitable because when you've engaged in sexual relations, um, you have, whether you want to believe it or not, you have intertwined your energy bodies, your physical bodies, and um, there's res residue that's left over. And unless you actually do energetic clearing, you're actually retaining those bits of those, you know, pieces of that other person, of every person you've had sex with throughout your life. So I highly recommend doing sexual cord cuttings. Um, they are a way, both sexual cord cuttings, and I would also say uh, doing a full chakra cleanse, like all seven chakra cleanse as well, to kind of cleanse and purify your energy body. I was just talking to a friend of mine yesterday who said, you know, he was just about to, uh, you know, just went on a first date with a, a new um a new woman, you know, that he's interested in uh, connecting with. And I said to him, I said, I do that sexual cord cutting. I sent it to you. You need to do that. You know, I said for both you and her, you know, you don't want to bring that garbage into this new relationship. It's, uh, it's not fair to you. It's not fair to her. Uh, and ideally she would do it as well if she were open to it. So a sexual cord cutting is actually a meditation that you can do to, um, you know, a guided meditation that will walk you through how to clear your energy body and cleanse and purify uh, your energy body from those previous uh, soul ties. And, uh, you know, I definitely would recommend doing it uh, several times. Um, I, you know, that's personally what I do. It's just because, uh, you know, um, you know, it's, uh, it's more of an art, you know, there is a science part of it in terms of how the energy works. But, you know, you know, especially if you were in a, like a long time relationship where you've, you know, been intimate with someone for a long period of time, you know, you've created tremendous ties to them. And now all of a sudden, if you end it, um, you know, you may want to do a series of them to just cleanse and purify your energy body and, and come to a new relationship as clean, energetically clean and pure as you can, um, just so that you can be starting in a clean slate and you're, there's basically not, you know, like six people in bed with you, you know, so just something to think about. So anyway, so what are some of the signs that you potentially have a soul tie with someone? Well, you can have, um, one one uh, symptom of having a soul tie with someone, and it's a negative soul tie, is the fact that you are in a, an emotional, spiritual, or sexual relationship with someone that is pretty much abusive, and but you don't leave. So you keep coming up with reasons for why you need to stay, and it's because the soul tie is so strong, it's keeping you bonded and attached to somebody that is really harmful to you, harmful to you either emotionally or physically or sexually or spiritually, you know, and I'd say spiritually, if those other ones were happening automatically, it would be negatively spiritual as well. But what I'm saying is that basically a telltale sign is remaining in a toxic, dysfunctional, abusive relationship 
um, and refusing to leave. Part of that is having to over overcome this soul tie, this sexual bonding that you've had with this person. So another soul tie would be um, you... So you've ended a relationship and it's been quite a long time. You're not even dating anybody, but you're still obsessing about this person from the past and you just cannot let them go. That is a clear telltale sign of a soul tie. And if you potentially were in a relationship with someone who may have been a narcissist, you know, part of that soul tie connection would be trauma bonding. You know, when they, when a narcissist engages in a relationship, they typically start off with love bombing and then uh, they continue with that until they feel that they've pulled you in and you're attached to them. Then they slowly start to like undercut you and now they start like, you know, sending little daggers to undercut your confidence and things like that. And the combination of love bombing and then, um, making insults and cutting you down, things like that. That's called trauma bonding. And that's actually something associated with um, victims who've been in, uh, you know, Stockholm syndrome, like, you know, people who've been kidnapped and things like that. That's that back and forth between positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. And what that does is, is it creates a trauma bonding. So if you were in a relationship with someone who was a narcissist and did do that love bombing and created that trauma bond with you, it can become very, very difficult to forget them and move on. So, you know, it's, it's even 10 times more important than if you know that you were in a toxic relationship with a narcissist, it's even more important than that you do those sexual cord cuttings, that you do those forgiveness meditations, that you release yourself from those pasts. But also, you know, if it was, if you're clear that it was a narcissistic relationship, then it's important for you to actually just educate yourself about, you know, how narcissists operate, what their, what their telltale symptom, you know, what their telltale signs are, what, how they operate and things like that. So that you can make sure that if you see another one coming down the pike, you can be like, yeah, no, I don't think so. I'm not going down that road again. Okay. So what's another, um, what's another, uh, soul tie? So if you, um, if you are actually visualizing this past person when you're currently like, so say you had an affair and you created a soul tie with somebody and now you've ended the affair and now you're back with your husband or your wife, um, or you're, if you were just dating somebody and cheated or whatever, and you are now with your current partner, but you are visualizing about the past person, that's a telltale sign that you have a soul tie with that past person and you are bringing that person into the bed, into your marital bed or into your, you know, into your, the bed that you are sharing with your partner. So that again, that's why it's so important to clear your energy body when you enter a new relationship with someone to cleanse and purify your energy body so that you are not bringing the baggage of your past into your current relationship and, and moving forward because it's going to be negatively, invisibly impacting your relationship whether you realize it or not. Uh, another one would be that you start um, taking on some of the negative traits of the person that you actually have the soul tie with. So say someone was kind of, um, you know, a depressive person, they were very cynical and very kind of angry, you know, edgy, things like that. You Over time, you may actually find that you start to manifest those same tendencies when you didn't when you met them and that's because they're slowly over time the more you're with them you are absorbing that energy into your body it's lowering your vibration and now you are starting to actually vibrate at their level um, and the thing is it's always important to realize that whoever has the strongest energy is really going to influence the other and so um, you know so one, you can influence them if they're incredibly angry, if they're incredibly depressive or whatever, it's going to take its toll on you. But if you're, if you tend to be a strong, high vibration person, they're actually then going to be siphoning, siphoning off your energy. So not only are they pulling the energy from you and they're lowering your frequency, but they're also leaving the residual energy of, you know, their res the, the residue of their kind of negative 
um, low vibrating, angry, irritable, depressive, um, you know, kind of energy within you. And now, you know, not only are, is your energy being drained like your gas tank, but now it's also, you're also having these other residual effects of being irritable, negative, depressive, things like that as well and you're kind of the entire relationship is just is, is just sinking you know it's you know relationships are supposed to when you come together in a loving relationship it's about building each other up and rising up it's not about two people crashing into each other and then you know you know crumbling from within and underneath from there um, so it's very important to think about um, you know who you want to um, share your energy with because your energy is your is your body it's your life force and so i i've said this before the saying is never sleep with anyone that you wouldn't want to become don't have sex with anyone you wouldn't actually want to be because you are becoming them the more you have sex with them the more you're absorbing their energy into you and you're being negatively influenced by them okay so um also if you um if you take on, like they've found that you can sometimes in a soul type connection, like you will start to um, experience things simultaneously. Like if they get sick, now you're getting sick. Or if they have addictions, you're getting addictions. So it's who you surround yourself with, who you allow into your energy field is incredibly important. It's very, very important. And I, I don't think people realize just how important it is to really be conscious of the people that you allow into your energy field, not just the people that you're sleeping with, but the people that you're surrounding yourself with. There's a reason they say that you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with. You can pretend that the people aren't influencing you and that their energy isn't having any impact on you, but you're kidding yourself. You're lying to yourself because energetically, that's not just how, that's just not how it works Gen that's just not how it works period end of statement in terms of you know the how the energy works how you absorb other people how you're influenced subconsciously and you don't and you're not even seeing it so it does really matter if if you want a high quality life then you need to surround yourself with high quality people who have high standards high virtue high morals and things like that so I hope you found value in that. Uh, just wanted to share some of those uh, telltale signs of potentially having a soul tie. If you like my videos, please feel free to subscribe and hit the bell so you're notified when I upload new videos because I'm always adding new content. And also in my description, I'm including a fundraising link. I am an abolitionist. I support Operation Underground Railroad and I have been for the past uh, three or four years. Um, my goal is to raise $1 million to free children from human trafficking. Right now, human trafficking consists of children who are stolen into the uh, sex slave trade or for slave labor or for organ harvesting. It is a $150 billion industry. It is the fastest growing criminal enterprise on the planet. 800,000 children a year are, are um, kidnapped every single year and funneled into human trafficking. And one child every 30 seconds is abducted in Europe for human trafficking. It is the greatest scourge on our planet. It is the most pressing issue that we have to heal. And so I, I hope if you feel in any way um, uh, inspired to donate, please hit the button and go to my donation page and let's rescue these children. Thanks so much. Have a beautiful day. Talk to you soon. Bye.